flush something valuable down the toilet? What if I told you that my answer is not only yes, but yes every day? My name is Stephanie Ishii, and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Environmental Engineering Sciences here at the University of Florida. And I'm here to propose that we start giving a little more thought to the things we flush down the toilet. In other words, let's talk about urine. Typically, our urine and feces are flushed away every day with high quality drinking water and then they're mixed with other waste streams. That entire flow of combined wastewater is then conveyed by pipe to a centralized wastewater treatment plant. Here at UF, all of our wastewater is treated at the water reclamation facility located on Gale Lemmerin Drive. However, alternative wastewater systems involving urine source separation are being researched due to the very unique characteristics of urine. Urine source separation is the collection and treatment of urine as a separate waste stream. This can be done through the use of urine diverting toilets and urinals. So first, let me explain how we actually do urine source separation, and then I'll share with you why we are so excited to do it. This is a urine diverting toilet. Urine is collected in the front bowl, while feces, toilet paper, and other solids are collected in the back bowl. These toilets have a small flush for urine and a larger flush for solids. This small flush for urine helps conserve drinking water and keep urine in a concentrated state. Liquids from the front bowl travel through a separate set of pipes for further treatment, while everything from the back bowl goes to a centralized wastewater treatment plant. Now ladies, in order to conserve the most drinking water, any toilet paper that you use after urinating needs to be thrown away in a trash can. This is so you can avoid using that large flush. These special toilets and urinals help us achieve urine source separation. But you're probably still wondering, why? Well, let's think about what would happen if we implemented urine source separation in all of the dormitories here on campus. First of all, urine source separation would not only require new urine diverting toilets, but also new plastic pipes for urine and urine flush water, and plastic urine storage tanks. The pipes convey urine from all of the toilets within a dormitory to a storage tank outside of the dormitory. Urine storage allows for disinfection and further urine treatment. This new equipment has both an initial economic and environmental cost. Once these new urine diverting toilets are installed, we'll start saving drinking water. And this is due to the small flush option for urine. This not only means less pumping of groundwater out of the Florida aquifer, but also less required drinking water treatment by GRU. Oh, and don't forget, reduced use of drinking water in our toilets also means less wastewater going to our water reclamation facility on campus thus requiring less energy for pumping and treatment. These savings in drinking water are both an environmental and economic benefit. We have to keep in mind, however, that the minimal use of flush water in urine diverting toilets and urinals can lead to mineral formation in pipes if they are not properly maintained. These minerals can reduce or block the flow of urine and urine flush water. Ongoing maintenance is required to ensure that this does not occur. Once urine is separately collected, we can focus on reusing the valuable resources in urine. Did you know that our urine is rich with nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, both of which are key ingredients in fertilizers? We are heavily dependent on the use of fertilizers for the growth of our food supply. Unfortunately, the production of conventional fertilizers can be destructive to our environment. And this is due to the intense use of land, water, and energy, as well as the production of harmful wastes. Furthermore, the rock we mine for phosphorus fertilizers is a depletable resource. We can recover the nutrients in dormitory urine and use them on campus as a replacement for the conventional fertilizer we currently use. For example, when magnesium is added to urine, the magnesium, nitrogen, and phosphorus form a mineral called struvite. Struvite can be used as a slow-release fertilizer, perhaps in our gardens, on Museum Road, or even in the swamp. Recovering nutrients from urine also helps us keep nutrients out of the environment. Excessive inputs of nitrogen and phosphorus into water bodies, such as Lake Alice, can cause accelerated plant growth and algae blooms. Algae blooms limit the amount of oxygen and light available to other living organisms within the water. Ultimately, algae blooms can decrease a water body's overall health, recreational value, drinking water quality, and fish populations. It's important to realize that the benefits of reusing nutrients from urine as fertilizer on campus are completely dependent on the UF community using urine-based fertilizers instead of conventional products. 
The implementation of urine source separation in UF dormitories has the potential to advance our university as a living laboratory of sustainability, at once offering an example of alternative wastewater treatment for other communities, as well as the potential for multiple research opportunities across disciplines. Potential research opportunities include the design and maintenance of urine diverting toilets and pipes, the various methods of actually recovering nutrients from urine, the effectiveness of urine-based fertilizers, and more. It's also possible that the implementation of urine source separation in our UF dormitories could result in dissatisfied residents. This could happen if perhaps our urine diverting toilets and urinals malfunction, if our urine storage tanks are unsightly or a health concern, or even if our UF community is unaccepting of urine-based fertilizers. Overall, the things we flush down the toilet on a regular basis demand additional attention, whether it's the nutrients in our urine or the drinking water we use to flush them away. Perhaps it's time we stop thinking about wastewater treatment as the handling of unwanted residuals and instead embrace the opportunity to derive wealth from waste. With that, thank you so much for listening and go Gators!